Welcome to another episode of Willowell High School's English Rules where we look at what our students are learning in the classroom at the moment. Year 12 Standard English have started Term 3 with Module C, The Craft of Writing. Last week we looked at the persuasive text from Prime Minister Paul Keating, Funeral Service of the Unknown Soldier. This week we're looking at an imaginative text, okay, Judith Wright's poem, The Surfer, which focuses on this wondrous relationship between the surfer, humanity, and nature, the sea. Now, I've got a treat for you. Okay, underlying this episode is a surfing instrumental, Bombora, by the Australian group, The Atlantics. So, just to get us in this mood, okay, with the surfer, a great surfing instrumental by The Atlantics called Bombora. Back to the craft of writing and Judith Wright's poem, The Surfer. We are not analysing this poem thematically. So we're not looking at just the theme of humanity versus nature. What we are focusing on is the way Judith Wright effectively uses her strong lexical choice and poetic techniques to create vivid images in our minds as readers and also to depict or present her themes too. And this is what we want our students to take away from a poem such as The Surfer. This strong lexical choice and these great poetic techniques and then apply it to their own writing. And poetry is such a great genre to look at this art or this craft of writing because poetry does not have the luxury of pages and pages in a short story and a novel. That means a poem such as The Surfer, every word, every line counts. And this is why it is such a rich text full of great language and great poetic techniques. Now, I'm not going to read the whole poem out, okay, or analyse the whole poem. I'm only going to look at a few techniques and some language that Judith Wright effectively uses to create such a memorable poem. So here we go, The Surfer by Judith Wright. The first end is just filled with strong lexical choices and poetic techniques. We know the surface thoroughly enjoying himself with the emotive language of joy and delight. But look at Wright's vivid depiction of the sea. The metaphor and alliteration of weirs of water highlights the endlessness of the sea, while the metaphor long muscle of water and long banks of foam reinforce this endlessness and also its strength. Despite the metaphor of thorns with the salt water stinging in the surfer's eyes, he is at one with nature and the assonance of the long O sounds of how his brown strength drove through the hollow and coil of green emphasizes the surface continuous play in the ocean surf, exerting all his strength and energy. I've highlighted that swimming so went out of sight as alliteration, but the repetition of the S sound is also called sibilance. This shows how humanity is really tiny in the midst of an endless sea. Despite the surface delight, Wright already foreshadows a change is coming with a lexical choice, mortal and frail. In the end, we are weak and mortal, only specks against the power and the vastness of the sea. And the change does come in stanza two, with Wright using repetition in calling the surfer to shore. With the sun setting and what a metaphor is last leaf of gold. And you'll notice it's got the alliteration of the L sound too. So she advises the surfer to catch 
the shoulder of one last huge wave. Notice again that metaphor of shoulder as the wave. And to come quick to shore with the alliteration or sibilance of speed and surf. And to reinforce this need for speed, she effectively uses the simile like a gull diving. The same speed of a seagull diving, she wants the surfer to quickly come to shore. And why so much anxiety? Because after dusk, the sea is evidently dangerous as Wright uses the metaphor, grey wolf sea, to depict it as not to be trusted. What makes this such a great stanza, however, is how Wright effectively extends the metaphor to build on this image of grey wolf sea. As it crouches on sand, fawning and mouthing, drops there and snatches again, drops and again snatches. And you'll notice the present tense of verbs, such as crouches, fawning, mouthing, drops, snatches. It captures this continuous, never-ending power. And the sea's destructive nature is vividly captured by the metaphor of its broken toys, its widened pebbles and shells. And no wonder Judith Wright is calling the surfer back to shore because, yes, he is enjoying his surfing, but it's mighty dangerous out there, especially after dusk. So the poem is full of strong lexical choices and poetic techniques. And we would like to reinforce this notion that every line, every word counts for you as a writer. And we want you to take away some of these techniques and apply them to your own writing. So let's recap some of these great techniques that you should have in your imaginative text. Specific language similes, metaphors, personification, symbol, alliteration, assonance, onomatopoeia, senses, and like I said to you, every word, every line counts. So craft of writing is not about other people's texts. It's about your text, and it's about taking techniques and language from great texts and then applying them to your own texts. You know, if it's hard for you to remember using all these techniques, have a checklist. You know, write three similes, three metaphors, two examples of personification, etc., etc. And in doing so, you're actually using these techniques. Don't forget, guys, to get ideas for your writing, please look at some of the ideas and characters that you studied in your other modules, okay, to give you some kind of an idea of what to write about. I hope that I have uh, given you some clues or some tips or recommendations on how to improve your writing for craft of writing. Wishing you all the best. See you next time.